Hopefully, uh, we were talking to, we, we thought we had you first. So we were looking, obviously, at, you know, 21 and 7, uh, just a legendary uh, fighter. And, and uh, your last four wins have all been decisions. And even the losses to, uh, to Edgar and Holloway were, you know, a third and fifth round losses very late in the rounds. Your win over Jeremy Stevens, a decision. You've put in a tremendous amount of rounds in the last three years. Um, is your body, how's your body handling that? I mean, I definitely feel things here and there, but overall, I feel like I'm in the best shape of my life. Uh, after doing so many five fives, you kind of you learn to push uh, your body to a whole new level. Uh, so, and you also, I guess, understand like when, you know if, if something's happening in round two that you guys got to keep your energy through round five. And have you do, you do you ever back off when you know like I can't blow it out right here because I'll never get to the fifth round? <laughs> no, I just. I, I just kind of know that to trust my, my cardio. That's what my, my guys always say. Just trust your cardio. And because I do know, I, in the back of your mind, every fighter doesn't want to gas themselves out. But I know that I train harder than my opponent. And so that gives me confidence just to keep pushing. And I know if I'm tired, then he must be really tired. Now, okay, so you know if you're tired, you absolutely know he is. Yeah. Now, what do you do for uh, besides for, for cardio? What is a typical uh, a typical Cub Swanson cardio workout? Well, earlier in camp, I'm doing a lot of like explosive and, and uh, strength stuff, and then when I get a little closer to the fight, I'm doing a lot more cardio, trying to stretch my lungs. So, I do this thing uh, with, uh, in Albuquerque called Power Clusters, and basically I'll do like 10 to 15 second sprints, and then 10 second breaks. And I'll do that for like five minutes straight, and I'll work my way up to doing five fives. So a ten to fifteen second sprint, and then you relax for ten to fifteen seconds. That that's a lot harder than it sounds. Like that's probably you know fun to do. And you, and you're outside, and you're just sprinting and then stopping and sprinting and stopping. And by the end of five minutes, you're you're wiped. Yeah, well, it's, I I do it indoors, and I'll do it on like either a treadmill or a uh, airdyne bike, and so you're just going all out pulling back all out and so what happens is late in the fight when my opponent's tired i can i can throw a big combination take a step back throw another combination take a step back throw another combination when my opponent is still trying to catch his breath i'm sorry jimmy no, 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 cut you off? No. what's up cub it's matt sarah how are you what's going on Nothing i'm good i recognize the voice thanks dude thank you. i don't know if it's a compliment or just my horrendous accent yeah of course i um <laughs> listen i can't wait for this fight i'm looking forward to it man i love all your fights let me ask you now you when you put brian otega he's he's so slick on the floor and i know you are no lemon on the floor yourself um you know i seen you on the ground very well rounded when guys are fighting guys that are so slick with the submissions it, sometimes they're hesitant to pull the trigger standing. So you're talking about laying these combinations, landing these, uh, throwing these combinations. What makes you not hesitant to be able to throw that without, you know, concerned about getting taken down? You know what I mean? Uh, just the fact that I track their face, you know, so uh, I'm watching their head and seeing where it's at at all times. If it drops below uh, my head, then I need to be aware and uh, keep my, my feet, um, you know, back. And if their head is up, then I'm I'm striking right for it. Nice. nice. I track their face. I've tracks, never heard that. I like that. And it's one of those things that just probably becomes an automatic thing. You're not thinking about it. You just mm. it's just a natural thing that you're doing as you're moving. Yeah, of course. And then I'm I'm looking right at their face, and I'm keeping track of their limbs. I'm I'm knowing what's coming at me. So when I'm throwing a combination and you counter punch. I'm worried about that coming at me and being aware and being able to either block it or move out of the way. Well, you're a black belt, uh, you know, jujitsu and, and, and it's, uh, you know, and also judo. So, you know, people are talking about so much about Ortega's ground game, but do you think that he's going to underestimate what you're going to do on the ground? Uh, I just, man, if it goes to the ground, I'm, I'm very confident. I Training for this fight, I work with some really good wrestlers. I was working with TJ, helping him for his fight. Uh, another guy, Juan Archuleta, is huge on the on the underground scene. Um, and the thing is, is I, I've been training for three months for this. Uh, we were training at the Gracie Bar headquarters with those guys, uh, with Felipe de Monaco. And then I was training at the uh, Gracie Bar in New Mexico with Barata. And so, I mean, I don't think I've done more grappling or wrestling uh, for a camp in maybe 10 years. 
Um, and then I did all my rounds in the boxing gym like I normally do. So this has been an amazing camp, and I'm ready for the fight wherever it goes. And, and you felt, um, you know, you, I'm sure you saw um, uh, uh, Holloway Aldo. Were you pissed off when uh, Frankie got hurt that you didn't get the call? Well, yeah, I was <laughs> for a little while I was pissed off. Uh, I knew not to get my emotions too wrapped up into it because at the end of the day I was fighting somebody sure. and I needed to be focused. So I think, you know, when you become a veteran, you get to understand all these things and you can have an emotional dump. And I didn't want to come into this fight bitter or anything like that because at the end of the day, this is the first time we're coming to Fresno. I'm the main event. I, f- I feel like that's a huge honor. I got a real dangerous up-and-comer yep. um, that I cannot lose to. So... I bring in my A game. I wanted to fight. Uh, I wanted to fight Holloway. I was ready to step up. It didn't happen, but I still have this fight, so I'm happy. Well, honestly, Cub, I mean, uh, if, if you do win this fight, I mean, uh, again, we, Lamas does have a fight coming up. And, uh, you know, Frankie, who knows how long he'll be out for. And then and Jose obviously just lost. So there's not many options ahead of you, which is, which is a great thing if you win this fight. Yeah, I definitely think that I'm in a good position. Uh, it would be five in a row, all top guys. And so, you know, I know that I knew that going into it. I need to go out there and I need to perform. That's always my main thing. Go out there, perform, give people the performance they're expecting. Um, you know, try to surpass that. Then I get to spend time with my, with my girl and my daughter, uh, for the holidays and, and then let, you know, my manager in the UFC figure out what's next. Okay. So you just enjoy the holidays and not worry about who, who's up against you next. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm, I've been doing this a long time, and, uh, you know, I put all my effort into each fight. And in between fights, I try not to get wrapped up in all the politics of it because that was just drive you crazy. Do you see yourself, uh, I think you said you, you've seen yourself as kind of a gatekeeper? Uh... Well, that's kind of the role that I feel they put me in. Uh, the way they book me fights is they say, okay, who's the toughest guy we can give up? What's, you know, what, what's a fight of the night? That that's the way they book me fights. They've told me that, um, you know, openly. So uh, I, I've been able to beat ninety five percent of the people they put in front of me. So uh, you know, I think it's uh, it's definitely my turn. I put in my dues. I've waited long enough. What do you think about the division now that McGregor is not uh, holding everything up? Well, I'm glad that he's left the division just because of that, all the shenanigans. I'm not a fan. You know, I come from a little bit of the the old school uh, where there's a little bit more respect. Um, And and I don't mind all the trash talking. It's just all the stuff behind the scenes. Um, And then just the holding up of the belts. And, um, you know, it it gets annoying for the, you know, 60, 70 other people in the division that are, you know, trying to live their dream too. Yeah, I guess it is a little bit frustrating. But now that you don't have that, you know that you do kind of have a clear path if you win this. But they, like I said a couple of times, you know, you're fighting guys below you. And again, you are beating them. So, I mean, you had fight of the year. I think it was just, what, 2016? Yeah, and I was the underdog in that fight. You know, they, you know they're, they got these up-and-comers. And, and uh, you know, the new generation MMA fighters are no joke. So I'm honored to, to be able to be tested uh, against them. And, you know, I get... At the end of the day, I get to do what I love, so I'm I'm happy with that. And Cub, before I forget, uh, because I have three daughters, congrats on becoming a new daddy. That oh. is that is amazing. That's Thank awesome. you. Thank you. It it truly has been awesome, and uh, you know they talk about having like new sparks of energy and everything. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. I I go and do these crazy conditioning workouts, and then go box for an hour. And my arms are dead, but I still want to pick her up and and hang out with her. So. Uh, it, it, it's, it's been so cool. Much, it's so much fun, and it gets better and better. I, not to get too cheesy on you, because I know we're getting ready for a, a fight. But you, know, I <laughs> feel you never truly felt like the, that kind of true love until you see your child. Jimmy's never going to feel that, Cub. No, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think you're right, Jimmy. I'm sorry. You never know, Jimmy. Neither, neither did my parents. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> no, but seriously, Cub, it is. It's a beautiful thing. I know. I know. You know, I, I have three daughters, like I said, so it's uh, so congrats again. That, that's great, man. Thank you. Thank you. And it's been awesome. I, she comes to some of my practices, you know, not all of them because I like to concentrate, but uh, Kenda brings her and, and uh, she's coming to the park when I do sprints and yeah. comes to the boxing gym. And it, it, I'm trying to enjoy it. You know, I had uh, too much of my 20s trying to make it in this sport. I completely yeah. 
don't even remember because I was just on the grind 24 seven. And now, nowadays I put in the hard work, but I enjoy it at the same time. We're on this. I think I, I believe I had my first child at 34, right? My daughter is eight and I'm 43. Am I way off? No, no, that's right. Yeah. All right. So I'm a, there you go. I don't know what that means. Yeah. It's I think, not, it's, a, I it's, think it's a very mature, you know, point in a life, you know, that in, in 30s, you, you kind of figure it out. I'm, I'm, I feel like I have a lot more to offer my daughter as she's growing up. Yeah, you get through your crazy 20s, and you're like, all right, now it's time to kind of chill and do the family thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Now, were you yeah. there when she was born? Yeah. Yeah, I was there. It was a it was a long one, like two and a half days, and um, wow. it was it was crazy. So, and you were actually in the room? Yeah, was, she ended up having a C-section. Okay. And so I went in with her and, you know, just... You know, holding her hand for the whole thing, it was, it was an experience for sure. How did you handle it? Because they say sometimes the fathers have a harder time than the, than the mothers do in the delivery room. I thought I did great. Yes. <laughs> I, I felt the pressure because my mom was like, don't pass out. That was the last thing she said. And I was like, come on, don't put that pressure on me. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was like determined not to, you know, pass out or throw up or, you know, just from, from the emotion of it. Did you feel the way you thought you would feel going through the experience? Like, I'm sure you had a pre, like, okay, this is what it might be like, or you're speculating. Was it what you thought it was going to be at the moment? No, it was, you know, too surreal. It's kind of like winning a fight. Like, you, you're excited, but it's just so surreal sometimes that you're, you're, you're just kind of taking it all in. Uh, I'm kind of the, I'm the kind of person that has to take it in and analyze it before I actually give it a lot of emotion. And so, uh, yeah, it took me a few days, and then it, it's just been uh, getting better and better. Now, you uh, uh, is this the last fight we have to ask you to on your on your contract? Yeah, it is. It is. And what do you what do you want to happen after this? In a perfect like, if you had your, uh, if you had your way, what would happen? A guaranteed title fight and uh, a bump in pay. You know, simple. Uh, I I have a daughter. You know, I have a family I'm building. I have plans uh, for my post fight career. And it's a lot easier when you're getting, you know, chunks of money at a time. Uh, and I'm not the idiot that's blowing it on cars or uh, at the club. Everything that I make, I'm investing, you know, because, uh, you know, I don't want to be working hard. I work so hard to do this. I don't yeah. want to work hard the rest of my life. I want to enjoy it with my family. So I, I want to get paid for everything that I've accomplished and, and you know, what I bring to the table. And I won a title fight because I've had it promised and taken away. Now, what did Simple. you, I'm you, sorry, you seem pretty, like you, you invested everything you made. Uh, were your parents good with money? Like my mother was very good with money, so I'm good with money. My father was fucking, would, would buy, you know, would not good with money. So <laughs> your mom and dad both really good with, with being responsible like that or did you learn that on your own? No. Nah. <laughs> My mom isn't the best with money, and and uh, my my father passed away when I was three months old. Oh, okay. Uh, which which is crazy because he's the exact age I am now, so it's pretty surreal for me to have a daughter at the exact same age. Oh wow! That, that he passed away from cancer, so that's kind of you know it's been a surreal year. Um, but uh, no, I actually had a mentor and my manager, uh, Kami Safdari. He's he's a you know we met in jujitsu years ago. He's a doctor. And he's been like my manager, mentor, big brother. And, you know, he's always kind of steered me the right way, he told me that fighting wasn't going to be, oh, my God, I made it. It's, this is a platform. Learn to build from it. You know, this, this is a strong foundation. You're going to build from it. And you have to, you know, when you're investing, I tend to be cautious because like, you panic. Like, you know, as a guy who fights for a living, I imagine that, like, you're very used to adrenaline. And it's got to be hard just to put, you know, put your money into blue chip stock. You know, it's got to be kind of hard to take your money and just kind of let it slowly grow. I mean, there's got to be that instinct where you just want to go out and f make something happen now. Yeah, yeah. Well, the trick is that, you know, if you can put yourself in a position to do both. Um, you know, I'm trying to do investment properties. I got, I, I got some stuff that I can't touch till I'm 65, you know. So Oof. you got to kind of spread it around and, and have diversity. That's 
what all the money people say. Yeah, you know, expand, what do they say? Diversify your portfolio. Uh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> On that note. Yes, but listen, man, I mean, look, I hope you get what you want. I, I, I mean, I was disappointed, honestly. I mean, I love Aldo, but I was kind of disappointed you didn't get the shot. But, you know, hopefully uh, if you do beat Brian Ortega, and he's very, very tough, like you said, he's young and up and coming, he's 12-0, uh, and 0. Um, I, I would love to see you get a shot. I certainly think you've earned it, and you're a legend in the sport, and I don't think anybody would not want to see uh, uh, you and Holloway again. So, uh, listen, man, good luck this Thank Saturday you. at uh, 10 o'clock on FS1, and, uh, you know, you just everybody loves you, and, and good luck with this fight. Never in a boring fight. Never, never. never. Yeah, Cub. I get bored in there. I'm not trying to be bored. You know, I'm <laughs> You're not boring us.